Mm. And anyway, we're on CCR once again. Watching Drone and Lowry. This game, sorry, go to and Lowry. This game started up right before we got here, so few minutes in, four minutes in. Lowry and he's just, an he's, he's just an incredibly strong technical player. I mean, he's played StarCraft professionally, so he's just, yeah. he's just an a really strong player. But um, uh, I mean, obviously, his knowledge of zero K. He hasn't been playing it as long as everyone else, no, so he's, and also, he's just sticks with really strong units. And they rely very much on that. Like they rely a lot on the strong microbial units, like glaives, massively. Like, glaives and scorches. They that's the thing. They're relying heavily on raider game and drone. They took advantage of that in Eye of Horus, going for the right counters, the right positions, knowing that Randy's going to be trying to attack the center primarily and attack mm. by winning by micro. So they went around the flanks. They attacked the flanks. They attacked. With rapiers, and then when Randy, I mean, Randy went to gremlins pretty quick, but drone hardly built air. They were just focusing on getting just enough. So it was really well done, just playing to Randy's weaknesses. Yeah. One thing, the gun. Okay, now you are cutting out. Shit. Okay, so Flores is on a. taking a slight break, and Sackdoth is. Unfortunately, cutting out. Anyway, Lowry is Lowry pushing away some of Gold's scouting. Nothing too major right now. Gold, on the other hand, gone for an air switch very early, like four, five minutes in the game, going for air switch, getting their swifts up. Lowry hasn't even set anything up yet for anti-air or air. Lowry doesn't even know this is happening. Though. Gorda is very heavily focusing on air. They aren't even bothering with ground at this point. They're just... They're pushing everything in air. Is that still there? Backed up? Uh, okay, you are cutting out not too much. We need to switch over. Anyway... Golda is, well, I think a bit behind, honestly. I mean, they have the economy, they have the air, but Lodri is probably going to... Actually, they haven't switched to anti-air yet. They're switching to air. Yes. But they haven't done much else beyond that. Which is a little bit surprising, to be quite frank. So, Golda is, however, despite the fact that they aren't really going heavily for attacking the units, they are going heavily for taking pretty much entirely naked expansion. There's some slashes here and there. And they have they have their defenses set up. They're making it harder for Lodri to attack. But Lodri... I think Lodri might want to be a bit more concerned. They're trying to expand as well. Both players are pretty much playing solitaire right now. Lodri taking the western and south side. Golda mostly taking their entire safe territory. Going past the midline, Gota's taking the east side. Lowry, are they even aware of that? No, Lowry isn't even aware that the east side is being taken. They do not have radar to deal with it. So, Lowry is going to... I'm going to have to deal with a bit of attacks coming in here over the west side of the map. Slasher able to stop one of the Scorchers, but the second Scorcher will be able to kill it without any issue. And after that, it's going to be the Lotus, which is going to kill it. Ooh, just barely, too, keeping the Mason alive. On the other hand, the scouting forces to the east from Golda are... They're... Wow, Lodri's moving everything back? That's a little risk. I don't know why they're going for that. I think they're... Okay, they were probably control setting their forces, but that... That stopping, getting rid of the darts, and now... This is where the concern comes in. All these... All of the Ravens coming in to get rid of the Scorchers and the Hawks... Ooh, punishing that overextension. Go to assuming that Lodri did not have air, and that assumption did not pay off. Three, four bombers going down? No, there's just three so far. Are those going to be four? No, it's not going to be four. Not easily. I don't know it's going to be four, but not five. And the Swifts come in, but Lodri has taken air control. Go to just assume that air control, then they did not. Okay, so Sacktoth, you might want to come to Mumble. I have it set up. And, wow, okay, Lodri just taking full advantage of this, everything they can get. 
All right, you here? That does. Wait, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, excellent. So as we yeah, see, we see um, Sorry, I'll just talk for a little bit to see if um, I'm cutting out or anything. But uh, yeah, you can see that this is a really strong attack around the side. This is very much Laurie's style of play, where he very strongly takes that territory and then rage around the side, where you see from Godet a really more expansionistic style. And now it's uh, coming off in Laurie's favor as he spends, sends all his raiders around the side. Well, that's... I mean, that's the thing, is expansion is beaten by attack. That's kind of how it goes. And go to, going for the naked expansion, that's even bigger. It's a little unusual on this map, too. Normally, players will go for a much more guarded expansion. They'll build lotuses and defenders all along just to make sure that any harassment like this doesn't get anywhere. As you can see, Lowry's actually done that quite extensively. There is a yeah, Laurie's done a comic span down the middle, where he's using one single strong push down the middle, which gives him a strong position to raid from, while God is just trying to take as much charity as possible, seeing that Laurie's defending so heavily with so many defenders, he just got gone for a territory grab, but now just a few, just a few scorches are, are just ripping his base apart. Well, that's the thing, is they went for that, but that was a bad read. I mean, that was Laurie baiting Goda, as far as I can tell, because Goda went for the naked expansion, thinking that Laurie just went for defense, without considering Laurie going for attack, and now... Because of that, Lodo was able to turn this around. I mean, there's still an army advantage. Luckily for Goto, he has. Lucky for Goto, he managed to switch into air, which allows him to very quickly respond to any kind of threats, any raiders coming in with bombers. That's but true. He's still behind economically. That's true. There is the and economic Lowry problem, and has still air. there's the air control problem. Lowry still has better mm. air control, by far. And there's actually not quite by far. Goto has now evened out with Hawks. But that's the thing is, I've mentioned before is. Whenever you're building bombers, you're spending air control. Right? That's resources that could have gone to. Think about it. Yeah, that's resources that could have gone to maintaining your air superiority. And if you know that you can get away with it, if you know your opponent isn't going to be able to beat your air superiority after building those bombers, that's great. But if they do, then it's a problem. And Lottery. Look at this side though, this attack with all these flashes. That's going to be really difficult to stop. And mm -hmm. also it gives soft air control in the area. They're not great against air, but they do enough DPS that you can't really just have fighters hang in the air above them. He's pulling them back now, but he has now cut off an area where he can expand back into and even up the territory control. Yeah, and that's going to help out quite a lot. Golda now also, on top of that, able to get quite a bit of reclaim as a result of, well, all the raiders dying. And from that, wow, 4k metal advantage on army. That is going to be hard to deal with. I think, is Lowry going for anything major? I'm going for Ravager Rush. He's going for Ravagers in response to the Slashes. Because Ravagers, they're the correct yeah, counter. They but are, you can definitely. see Lowry has already switched into Scorches again. He's preempted this, and he's using Scorches, which will... I mean, uh, they're not has. bad against Ravagers. Yeah, Goda has already preempted it. Yeah, I'm okay. going to... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's always a key thing to do, is make sure you are aware of what's... What you need to do next, based on what your opponents can use to counter. Very you see the Scorchers are ripping apart these Ravages now. Yeah, with the Slasher support, that's even better. It's just no easy way through. Unfortunately, Lauder didn't get Ravager... If they had Ravager Leveler, I think that would have done the trick. Because Levelers do have quite a bit of health. Like, not quite as much as Ravager, but enough they would survive Ravager this Slasher Leveler is... It's what you need against this combo. You need the Ravagers to kill the Slashes, you need the Levelers to kill the Scorchers. And it's, 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 it's a strong... They're both using different combos in the factory. It's one of the strengths of the vehicle factories. If you have two really... You, know, you have several really synergistic combos of units that you can use in very different ways. Yeah, and that's something that is Here comes tricky air. to do. I think it's when you, Oh, yeah. Go, wow, they're going to take air control entirely. But that's one of the things that is hard to do. You have to remember, what is it my opponent will do after they see what I've done? And what should I do Ooh, in order to respond to that? What a swing! Yeah. Look at this though, he's on top of his factory with all these fighters. That is a huge swing in God's favor. When we were just looking at uh, Laurie taking up so much territory, wiping out this naked expand. Now Goda, because he's, he's still managed to re-naked expand, and Laurie stopped defending him, he's just camping the air factory. Well, that was... I mean, Laurie couldn't really capitalize. After the slasher push, Laurie had to be back on the defensive. And Golda now going for expansion again, once again naked, so if Lodri can push back from this, if they can get out of this, if they can push Golda back, they will be able to get in. Yeah, you can see he's using lav uh, Ravages in an enfilade along the side of the line, which is how to use them, but he has to retreat against the bombers now, he doesn't want to over push. Well, I think the important thing is going to be that if... 
sorry. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get. Oh, it's true. This is the. I'll, I'll commentate it a bit. There's a brutal mess here in the middle with all these units coming in. You switch, have to switch to um, land AA, which is uh, a little bit. Um, a little bit. It's not what you want to do when you're in air versus air to have to switch to land AA. But he's not even denting these bombers, and the scorches are ripping that rav those ravages apart. Oh, and, and yeah, got us one, yeah, and he's Lodi won that. Throws in the towel. Oh, there's Flores. Okay, good. Hey. All right, good. We're all in. Excuses. That's funny. I was on the spring server. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was. So that you was missed... a really interesting game. Yeah, Laurie basically. We we almost were ready to call that for Laurie when he went through with the raid. We thought he'd continue up on that, and then Goda just swung it right back with really strong yeah, air Gota... control, really strong unit counters, and that slasher push. Yeah, Goda basically just decided like, they lost a lot of economy, but they had enough army at the time that they could push back. And Laurie, while well, they had defenses, didn't have enough to hold exactly. off the slashers coming in because those slashers had been built the entire game. They were being used as light defense throughout Goda's territory. And after that, it's, it's what we were talking about earlier. That the defense beats um, the naked expand beats defense. It's the right thing. So he switched into raiders to try and counter, but it was just a little bit too late, a little bit too light. Got it. Just retook the territory fairly easily. Had he had bombers too. there, so that to make had the bombers just operating. Further attacks, yeah. So any further raids would just not work, and you'd take all this attrition damage. And then he just roundly rounded his surrounded up the game. After Laurie had a territory advantage, yeah, so I think it's that's really, what it was, really, though, really interesting. Is that to showcase? vehicles versus vehicles. It wasn't a matter of defense versus attack, or rather, expand versus attack. I mean, Gorda had enough with the air, like you said, had enough to defend with. It wasn't clear, obvious static defense, and obviously that can be pulled out of position and can be baited and destroyed more easily than the static defense, but it was still enough that by the time they threw it in there, it was basically they had they had a way of responding. If it weren't for the air factory, that Lowry would have had that very easily. Yeah, I think that um, I, th I think that um, it was really just uh, him trying to capitalize on the naked expansion and it being a little bit too late. He had a ton of defenses, way more than Gotta. He'd overinvested in it, and you can see Gotta went straight around it. It was the commander push through the middle that I was talking about earlier. That long line of defenders, which aren't mm -hmm. that great against slashes anyway, really. I mean, they they can fire back, which is more than LLTs can do. But you know, you can come along the side of the line and just wipe them out one at a time. But he just took, chose to come around the other side. He never even pushed into the middle, so the defenses are rendered irrelevant. By defending with mobile units and naked expanding, Dota really got the advantage there. Yeah, because it is easier to transition from defense to attack when you do that, which makes it hard to deal with. Because you can't, because when you're attacking, what you want to do when you're attacking is expand, because you're thinking, well, my opponent's going to be on the defensive. But that sort of flexibility is hard to make that work. The attack really has to go off without a hitch. This is the um. I think also lack of sort of the problem with defending. It's very much in the meta game right now that you build a big line of defenders down the middle of the map. You plant your commander and you do that, especially on Red Comet, a map like this, which they choose, they might be choosing next. The but in a map like Comet Catcher, you really you can beat that by just raiding a lot, by using uh, mobile defenses, defenses, by switching into air, which is really fast and can cover a lot of territory because the map's so big and so hard to defend. Yeah. Well, we'll see Red Comet will probably have a very similar style of play, though admittedly, it's not quite as big of a deal. Oh, sorry, the audio quality might be slightly lower as a result of being uh -oh. on Mumble. It's much easier to have consistent audio for Sacktoth, though. Like, we don't get, we, Skype has a tendency to drop out, or chop out. Oh, this so. is our second Comet game. Red Comet? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I hope, I hope everyone's enjoying my commentary enough that they can... Right, though, audio, audio it's okay. Quality. Not the biggest deal. I actually do have a bit of processing going on, so the noise isn't really that big of a deal. It's more just there is a bit it's of compression. Good but, to hear. Yeah. Oh, whoa! Lori's going for cheese. Lori's going for that that third spot cheese that we saw Orphelius do against Lori in the last tournament, and now Lori is trying to pull it off against Golda. That's always a game that got it. It's really good at stopping cheeses, and I say this as someone who cheeses against him a lot. Well, or I think used to. Oh, this is the thing. Gota isn't really looking for it, and the red comet cheese. He's looking for it. He's oh looking yeah, you're right. It. Never mind. You're right. He. They are. They are. And the thing is, Gota always that happens too often. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, the problem with Lori that it works for Lor or worked for Orphelius is that Lori went hovercraft. So the daggers they didn't have the critical mass they needed by the time the scorchers came in. 
And also, now it's, it's hard four, to scout. Fortress, it's now it's time to go. Yeah. But the thing is, daggers can't scout as easily. Yes, Darts already constructed. Is constructing his uh, mason and uh, a third uh, max. Um, okay, Golda has a few seconds. And that scorcher is not moving. There's no radar. Or is it on the commander? No. No, the commander is unupgraded. There's a defender coming up that won't be of much use. And there's one scorcher. Scorcher is moving in somewhat in the right direction. Oh, oh there we somewhat. go. What? There's one defender, one LT, a second LT. Golda, just now seeing the scorchers come in. And the lotuses are being built. They're not being. They're actually, they are being built quickly enough. Ah, uh, he'll he'll live now. Yeah, Golda's okay. commander might die. No, Golda's commander's not going to die. Not enough direct targeting. Lottery did not micro that well enough. Oh, oh man, micro that commander fail. was almost dead. If the commander had been successfully dived, I think. Yeah, Lottery forgot to set target. Yep. If you watch Goddard's unit commands, he often sets target. You Google Frog does the same thing. Oh I yeah, mean, yeah. Micro, I do the same thing all the time too. You have to. But the units just end up doing their own thing too much. When you want it, when you want something dead, you have to set target. Otherwise, it will not die. Something else will take your unit's attention. A score to it's turn interesting right. That Gutter, so if the Gutter was playing a um, he wasn't playing a support commander. If he'd been playing a support commander at that time, he'd be dead now. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Actually, that that would have been below two thousand. Yep, this is why Goddard plays. Uh, doesn't play a SWAT commander. He's one of the few who plays uh, strike quite consistently. That is unusual, but I didn't notice that. I mean, I've personally tended towards battle com, so. yeah. either battle or recon. I've since the economy change, where commanders don't have per chassis economy bonuses, I've stopped playing support almost entirely. Yeah, some people like the extra build range and some of the other utility that it offers. But uh, personally, I get in one. One, I get cheesed too often, exactly like that. I play a battle commander. I do not want to lose my commander. I, t to be fair, I over push with my commander as well. So. Ah, that yeah, battle commander works perfectly for that. Although, I mean, I once use... you get once you get used to it, it's hard to stop. And then you, well, if yeah. you go to any other commander, you just lose it. That's that's exactly right. I mean, I I use battle to on smaller maps like this, and I use on more on maps with more terrain, with more choke points and such. I tend to use recon com. Because jumping becomes more useful and there's less opportunity to be surrounded. Yeah, Golda's just Yeah, you need sort of everything. terrain to take advantage of that. I don't know, Lori is, Lori is not giving up. They're actually still in the game. Economically, their only downside right now is power. And they're building yeah, that up. That's not much well. for Gambit. Losing that many scorches early, it's, it, it can uh, lose you, it can uh, really put you behind. But often it puts the enemy into a very defensive mindset, and you can just expand really hard, which is what he's doing now. Yeah. He's, he's, you can see that uh, Goddard's constructor is only building just a radar tower now, while Laurie has already started making an LLT and well, uh, expanding with the East constructor. I mean, Golda has been expanding over to the northeast, so there is that. Oh yeah, no, sorry, that's right. He has. Oh no, sorry, actually, northwest. No, Golda, yeah, no, sorry. I mean, I didn't see a, that. <laughs> it is a defensive expansion posture. It is. They're expanding along the safest possible side. Whereas Lori is expanding along the south side, which is considerably risky. They might be losing risky. it, though. Yeah, the problem also, is you... Oh, he's pulling back. He knows it. Well, this Scorcher here is going to stop it. Like, Lori... Yeah, no, that was, he, he was aware of it. He was on top of it. Sometimes, you know, the Scorcher is just, you know, ships in the night, and one goes past the other, and suddenly you lose all your mexes, but God is on top of it, obviously. No, I mean, if you look at Goda's vision, they have clear sight of what's going on in the northwest side of the map. They aren't letting that go. Lori's no, taking no a radar, very though. aggressive commander position though in the middle of the map, putting lots of his energy there, which means that he's going to put defenses there. When you see someone building lots of soul panels in the middle of the map, it means they're planning to put, build a defensive position there to defend it. No, it, yeah. use, it means you have all your build power in that spot where the solar got built. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's But then true, you're going to build your defenses there or keep it alive. You defenses there to defend it. Because you, <laughs> you have all your build power there. You, you lock yourself it? into the decision, yeah. But also, you have all your build power there, so where else can you build defenses? Your build power isn't anywhere else to build defenses with. And uh, Lori really, really needed it. to uh, take a, a, a big risk to come back from that build uh, rush. Look at uh, God, he has four constructors running around. Yeah. yeah, the naked expansion from Goddard now is really pulling him ahead. Um, Laurie's playing conservatively, which, you know, he really Overly. needs to sort of, like, take the initiative, yeah. And he's building a strong position now, so there's two metal extractors behind that that he can take. He should send constructors there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's just trying to build up a military advantage now. He's behind on military, he's behind on eco. So that really did cost him. It was well, a very risky move. He's doing it against Goddard, so you understand why. Yeah, I totally understand. I think, though, at this point, 
this is now getting to be a bad read on unit use, like in unit types, because these are Scorchers being thrown in against Scorchers, which there's really no easy way to push in. Whereas Levelers, especially with the, the Slashers coming in, Leveler Ravager right now would be uh, perfect. That's the one juicy con there. Oh boy. Lodry going for it. Sorry. Goldie going for it. Lodry, are they defending? They have Scorchers right there. They have Scorchers immediately south of there. It looks like Lodry's just trying to pull these Scorchers into the defenses to have them die. And that, well, it killed one of them. Not both. This would be, okay, I was about to say, this would be a great time for Lodry to attack, and that's exactly what Lodry knows. They are attacking right now, having weakened that Scorcher line. They're just going to go for it. Yeah, he, he gets two uh, Maxis for his effort. Oh, at least two. Possibly a Mason on There's top There's one around of that. the back as well. He's distracted, and he's taking out those um, expansion around the nice. upper left. But he's yeah. losing his Scorchers in the middle to oh, the enemy. They, while the Slashes oh, come in, so it's yeah. a multi-pronged attack from Goddard. Yeah, this is not going well. He's going to lose all that defense in the middle. He's going to lose those um, solar panels because he's mostly built level T's in defense. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the army to stop the Scorchers. This might be for Slashes of their own. I don't know. It might work. 15 come against 26. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is very risky. The commander's going to go down in about 15 seconds. No, 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 no. Whoa, never mind. The commander stays alive. No, it's level one. It has a light particle beam. So oh, yeah, if he true. pushes in with his against these slashes here, and he manages to stop the the push and get the reclaim, he still has a chance. But it's going to be difficult. He really needs to use these his own slash as well and use his commander aggressively, which is something Goddard doesn't have because he's Goddard is using his commander just to assist the factory. Yes, well, or build solo collectors. Although the one thing is yeah, well to build base power. Yeah. yeah. Although at this point, I think. Lori may still be losing too much territory. I don't think they're going to be able to get the yeah, reclaim. Yeah, Lori's consolidating behind his defenders now, so he's, he's, he's accepted that he's lost the territory and he's just trying to stall, which yeah. I don't think is going to win in the game. No, he, they need that reclaim. That's the only way they're going to get back in. They're, they're only going to be able to get the economy even if they manage to take that field. And it looks like they realize that. They are going for it. The Slashers are moving forward. There is the switch over to Ravager. Ravager Scorcher for Golda. Oh, Golda's going for the direct counter. Lori's continuing to go for the units that will be soon countered. However, at least for a brief period, Lori will be able to take some reclaim. Some. Much of it, however, has already been taken by Goddard's constructors. <laughs> There's... Yeah. How much is there? Goddard is uh, sort of... Goddard has sort of been accessing a little bit, though. So, I mean, I, I think that's more a result of having so much metal. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing when you have, you know, like, you know... Well, Lori has too many constructors on a spec three now. Yeah. Yeah, but well, there's not oh. much to do with them on any otherwise. No, and Gold on the other hand, getting more and more caretakers. I think it'll be in the next two or three minutes. Gold is just gonna explode. I don't see any. Yeah, way I think you'll see an air switch just just finish out the game, snipe the commander, and once he's sniped the commander, there's nothing really in the middle stopping them. The scorches. Uh, I don't even you know, know if the air, scorches are coming in now, killing the slashes. Air oh, switch the is, slashes is not necessary. The scorch is gonna take it. And no, these are not semis. These are quarterfinals, by the way. The commander's down, and Lowry throws in the towel. A nice attempt at recovery, though. I mean, Lodri almost had it. It was just, when you recover from that cheese, you have to play perfectly in terms of just taking what you need to get, keeping your opponent contained, making sure your opponent remains on the defensive, while also making sure that you yeah. don't get hit. And Lodri got hit a lot. I think it, it's the natural thing to do to want to uh, cheese uh, someone like Goddard, who's such a good player. But of the course. thing is, Lori is a flat map specialist. He specializes in um, vehicle, tank, and hovercraft. He, he knows these factories really well. He pioneered tank play. You know, we've adjusted the, yeah. factory ta the, the tank factory to be more viable because Lori was playing it and it was almost viable. In the same way, we adjusted spiders because Goddard was playing it and it was almost viable. That's why we added the red back because he was morphing his fleas into warriors. So we added. A warrior to spider because that's what they needed to make themselves viable a bit more. Mm -hmm. So he should really just play with strong fundamentals against Goddard because Goddard, one thing Goddard excels at is beating a cheese. You're not going to get him and you know you should know that Goddard does not go support comp very often either so he's not as easy to snipe as some other players. It's not many games that come down to commander choice like that. No. All right, so we're going to be moving on to possibly semifinals between Golda and Drone. I think Clone and Google Frog are still going on. Yeah, Clone How and Google is Clone doing? Do, do, I, ho I, I felt not too bad about uh, giving Clone a buy because Clone is a really good player. And while I would like to, play, I would expect to be knocked out by Google Frog. He's better than me. I mean, I can yeah. go quite try hard against him. I can take a lot of LO off of him. But he wins more games than he loses, especially when he's playing seriously, especially when he's playing, you know, a factory which he, you know, he's comfortable with. And but I feel like Clone is 
has a lot of potential as a player, so I'm happy to see him continue in the tourney instead of me. Yeah, that's the thing. It's pointing, it's Scuzzy pointing out that the that set target was the only thing that stopped that cheese from working. Also, um, or the tomato choice also um, stopped it from working. So I mean, there's a, oh, there's a the few variables choice. that could have gone into that. There's more of the commander choice. Yeah. If it, if either of those things were, were different, but set targets under lower control. Okay, so we're gonna I guess have drone versus yeah, definitely order. under lower control oh. as you said. I guess. I mean, that seems like the most likely next thing to happen. I'm here, so we can do it. So are we going to jump into the game with uh, Klon and Google Frog? Or? I think we're going to move on to semis, because Klon and Google Frog I think are already on game two. Okay. It's such a shame, because Laurie is such a good flat map player, and I really hoped when he picked Red Comet. Uh, he, he did really strong on, on Comet Catcher. He played it a bit more like he would play a Red Comet, where you have those six metal extractors and you know three each on each side, and you yeah. go there, you build a long defender line. That's it's kind of it's become the meta on Red Comet. And he played Comet Catcher a bit like that, whereas Godo I think has a little more experience. He has a light, wider range of play. Where Laurie is a specialist, but Laurie he has really good fund of fundamentals with those factories. So for him to do, choose to do that cheese, and I mean that's one of my favourite cheeses to be fair. If mm -hmm. I'm going to do a cheese and it's going to be a standard game cheese, not some wacky thing that's probably not going to work. I'm going to do like a mass scorcher cheese. I really enjoy that one. I mean, it's, but yeah, it, it you can't do it versus Goddard. I learned a long time ago that he scouts too well, he defends too well. It's just, you need to play standard against him and beat him down and destroy your wrists <laughs> and maybe you'll take a game. That's how you have to do it. Ah, uh, yeah. I can understand why Laurie, but Laurie's a flat map specialist, so I, I think he should have given it his all and showed his best game. I... Yeah, I agree. I don't know if that was... I don't know. I mean, I think that wasn't terrible in the sense that I don't think... It, it almost worked. Yeah. It would have been interesting seeing God playing behind, because then the, the pressure's off. Laurie, Laurie can really show, because he's good enough to beat Godda. He is. If he plays his fundamentals, he plays his uh, uh, factories he's comfortable with, he can beat Godda. And if he puts Godda on the back foot from the start, but playing from the back foot, if the cheese fails... Um, and you play from the back of a foot from the start against Goddard, you're not going to win. <laughs> no. I think, well, the thing is, it is it is common to go cheese against players who are better than you, just as a thing. Because the idea being that the better player is probably better at the late game. They're better at the long game, but Goddard, not as good at the short game. It's not Goddard, because he faces it so often that he's just, um, he's just, he's point perfect against it. He always scouts perfectly, and he really, a lot of the things... A lot of times players skip the first scout because you often just run straight into the commander or an LT and lose it. Right. That's just wasted money. And the enemy will send a scout at you and you'll discover their factory choice, which is the major thing you're trying to scout anyway. So it doesn't really matter that much. Gotta always scouts. Or at least <laughs> he always scouts when he be cheesing. I'm going to say that. I definitely know that one. Well, I agree, although I still think in that case that is... That is, in this particular case, I don't think something that was relevant. I still think a lot of it had to do with the set target. Like that that cheese would have succeeded. Yeah, no. I it was that, that close. It's more God's reaction cheese in general. He's just he's really good at, against it. I mean, it is sometimes hard to... The reason I like that uh, Scorcher cheese is because it's hard to scout. Because people are building Scorchers anyway. And whether they're building like five Scorchers and maybe one less max metal extractor and no LTs. Or whether they're building three Scorchers and just lightly harassing things. You know, you, you can't really tell. But yeah, first, which is going to end the game. Anyway, we have started. 